Hey there, I'm Meg, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a brand guide using Canva. Now, if you're not sure what a brand guide is, it's basically a cheat sheet of all the visual components that make up your brand, including the fonts, colors, and even your logo. A brand guide is super helpful to have to ensure that your branding materials, your marketing materials, everything that you put out there is consistent. The key is to build brand awareness, and you can only do that if all of your materials are the same. So having a brand guide handy helps you or the graphic designer that you hire make sure that they're using the same fonts and colors throughout all of your marketing materials. If you'd like to take a little bit of a shortcut, be sure to head to my link in description where you can access my brand guide template in Canva. Either way, I will meet you on Canva in just a bit. When creating a brand guide in Canva, you can work from scratch. What you would do is you would create a flyer design, which is basically an eight and a half by 11 canvas, and you would just input all of your elements manually or if you wanna take a little bit of a shortcut, you can use my brand guide template, which is right here. I link to it down below in the comments description section. And what you would do is click on that link and you would be brought here. And what you'll do is you'll click use template and it's going to add this design right into all of your designs on Canva. The first thing I recommend doing just because I'm a little bit OCD is rename this so instead of copy of rename it to your business and there you go so the brand guide is broken into a few different elements as I explained before so that way you know what's what your main logo is going to go here your favicon which is short for favorite icon and I don't know if it's pronounced favicon or favicon I just picked my favorite and rolled with it and what the favicon is is that little icon that shows up in tabs on your internet browser so for example this is mine if you have a logo that has an icon in it also known as a logo mark that is what you would use for a favicon. But because I don't have that, my logo is just text. I had to create my own. So I just use the initials MB. So heading on back to the brand guide, you have your fonts, which are the fonts that are used both in your logo and for your brand. And then you have the colors that are used in your logo and for your brand. And I'll explain what that means a little more shortly. So if your logo is oriented like a square, all you have to do is upload it and then drag it in and it'll take on that shape. But if your logo is like mine and it's more of a wide horizontal orientation like this, you'll have to click on it and then use the corners to resize it. And I'm just going to get rid of that. So you don't have to make this thing too big. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I like things centered, so I'm just going to drag it to where that guide is. So now I'm going to add my favicon. And because it does work with a square, I'm just going to drag it into that photo uh, placeholder. And your logo mark is, just to explain a little bit more in detail, because I know this confused me when I first started out, it's literally the icon on your logo if you have one. So when I was having, when I was doing my photography business, my logo mark was a camera. So it was a camera and then Megabug Photography. So I separated the camera from the logo and that was my favicon. So if you don't have your icon separated from your logo, you can go back and ask your graphic designer if you worked with one for that. Or if you made your logo in Canva, you would just make a copy of your logo file and then on that copy, delete the text and enlarge the icon and download the icon separately. So in regards to your fonts, this is also another thing that if you worked with a graphic designer, you'll need to ask them for. Hopefully they let you know the font names and if they were awesome and went above and beyond, they even sent you the font files. Now your font files will come to you in a folder. They may be an OTF or a TTF. You would just double click on that and it would download the font onto your computer. 
But if you did not find out what those fonts are and your graphic designer has gone AWOL and doesn't want to talk with you, you can use what the font. I'll link to the website below, but it's myfonts.com slash what the font. And this is not completely accurate, so this is literally a last ditch effort. What you'll do is you will scroll down to this section and you are literally going to upload your logo. So hold on, I gotta forgot to plug in my external hard drive where I keep my logo. I try to keep things organized. So one thing to note is that when you upload your logo to what the font, if you have numerous fonts in your logo, which you probably do, you'll have to do this process one at a time per font. So I, I will show you exactly what that means in just a moment. Whoops, branding. Okay, so I am uploading my logo and what the font automatically pulled the largest font. So I am just gonna click the blue next icon, let it process, and these are the closest fonts. Script fonts are super hard to match just because there's so much variety in a script font. So what you would do is you would go down and find the font that you think matches the most. I think this one is the closest, which is My Story Regular Duo. Then once you write that down, you'll head on back and you're going to click on whichever. So for the next font, you'll see these little dashed lines around. So just click on the next font, click next. And this one's pretty accurate. I use the courier font, which is a standard font that most everybody has. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty much spot on here. So going back to your brand guide, one little hiccup that I found with Canva is that Canva may not have your brand font. So for example, the name of this font is Adeline. I forget if it's two D's or two L's, but it doesn't really matter. So what you do is you click up here and you would look for that font. And this is the closest one, and it's still not completely accurate. So what I would recommend doing, if your fonts are not on Canva like mine, I would change the font to a more generic font so it's kind of obvious to you that that's not the right font. Usually like a a Times New Roman, something standard is good. There we go. And then I know my font two name is Courier. And my font three is Proxima Nova. Now my font three is not on my logo. I only have two fonts on my logo. Font three is what I use as the body text. So on my website, that body text is Proxima Nova. On my print marketing materials, the body text is Proxima Nova. So even if you don't have all of your fonts or your colors used in your logo, that doesn't mean that your brand doesn't include more fonts or colors. And I'll show you how I did that in colors in a little bit. So going back... If you have fonts that are not on Canva, what I would recommend doing is kind of shrinking all of this together. And what I'm doing is I'm dragging my mouse over and I'm selecting everything so I can just move it up. And then I'm clicking Command C and then Command V to copy paste. And you're basically gonna create another section and just gonna click away, get back in, and call this Canva fonts. And what you'll do is you're gonna match up the closest that you can get on Canva. So for example, Canva doesn't have a specific Courier font, they have Courier Prime. So I'm gonna change that to Courier Prime and change the name. And Canva also doesn't have Proxima Nova, but I found that Helvetica, which it, their version is Helveticish, 
however you say that, is the closest. Helvet, uh, Helvet. And I'm not gonna match up Adeline just yet because it's gonna take me a while. So if you're like me, you may wanna move your fonts around. So basically what this does is when you look at your fonts, you can easily identify what the name of each font is. So for example, Courier Prime matches up with this. The fonts look similar. So the purpose of a brand guide is to make things super easy for you. So whenever you're creating graphics or you ask a graphic designer to create graphics, you would send your brand guide to them and they would match the fonts and the colors to keep everything consistent. The goal is brand identity, brand awareness. Keeping the consistency makes it so much easier for people to recognize your brand. So that is why I change the actual font the text here to the actual font so it's easy to identify. And I will show you my actual brand guide which I created on Adobe Illustrator because I made my logo on Adobe Illustrator so my fonts are there. So I don't use my Canva brand guide. But if you don't have Illustrator, this is a great way to still have a brand guide that's pretty close and spot on. So down here, you are literally going to change these rectangle shapes to your brand colors. If you have your brand colors automatically loaded in Canva, you can just click there. I show you how to import your brand on my Create with Canva course, but for the sake of today, we are just gonna keep a go. And if you don't have the names of your colors, whether it's the hex code or the Pantone, you can head on over to Canva's tool, the Color Palette Generator. I will link to that below as well. And you will upload your logo and it's going to process and literally pull out the colors and they're pretty spot on I know for a fact that this one is a little bit off but if you're in a pinch this is pretty close you'll know that this one is clearly not matched so some colors may not be a match this literally just pulls out the colors from your logo. This is also a cool tool to use if you want to pull out a palette from a photo. So for example, when I was coming up with my brand colors, I literally went on Pinterest and I Googled pastel photos. I saw a photo of a VW bus and I uploaded that to Illustrator and I used the dropper tool on Illustrator, which is basically the same thing as what this does. And I pulled out those colors and that is how I came upon my logo. So this is the hex code. The hex code has that little hashtag or pound sign. And then it has this series of six letters and numbers. So you're going to want to copy that. It's a little finicky how you copy it. And you literally want to type in or paste in that hex code so that way you know what it is and then drag it in center. And then you will click here, click there, click new color, and then paste that hex in. So you're gonna repeat that process for the rest of your colors. And I recommend going in order of how the colors appear on your logo. So on my actual brand guide, this would be blue, then orange, green, purple. Just for consistency's sake. And you may not have five colors, you may only have three. And for me, I do have five colors, even though my logo only has four. This fifth color is the color that I use for my body text. So basically, Proxima Nova will always be in this color and it's a gray. And the code is, I have it memorized because it's pretty easy. It's 737373. So that's my gray. And then I would just put the hex code in down here. So once your brand guide is where you want it, you will head on up to this down arrow and you're gonna download it as a PDF print. You can also download as a JPG or a PNG, but I recommend PDF print. Then you'll click download, wait patiently, and there you are. For me, I have to click download a second time and then save it right to my desktop and I'm not gonna save it.
So that is how you create a brand guide in Canva. Again, if you didn't want to work with my template, you wanted to do this all from scratch, it's pretty simple. These are all text blocks. And then that's just a rectangle shape block. So you just arrange it however you want. And if you like this brand guide template, but you want to move things around, you can absolutely do that too. Whatever works for you, this guide is meant to be completely customizable to your liking. So I hope this video helps. I hope you have a brand guide that helps save you time in the future when creating your marketing materials. And I'm sure you will love the consistency of the look of your marketing materials and your clients will as well. Thank you for tuning in. For a more in-depth look at branding and how to grow your business through marketing, check out my online marketing 101 course. It's eight weeks and dives in-depth on topics such as website design, social media, e-newsletter creation, publicity, and more. The course also includes access to my popular mini courses, Create with Canva, Facebook Facelift, and Instagram Insight. I designed this course to help take the overwhelm out of marketing and growing your business because I've totally been there and I know how frustrating it can be. I've linked to the course below and I will see you in my next video tutorial.